Kia ora everybody and welcome back to Civilization 6. Today I'm covering Babylon. Babylon came out in the New Frontier Pass, so it's one of the more recent civs to the game and building on the absolute mammoth that is Babylon in Civilization 5, Civ 6's Babylon doesn't disappoint. In fact, I would say Babylon has become more crazy. Uh potentially more overpowered and significantly stronger in Civ 6. Uh, let me dive into the video. So I'm going to tell you a bit about what makes Babylon unique, its leader's ability, its civ ability, its unique units, and then I'm going to spend majority of the rest of the video talking strategy, because strategy is key with Babylon. Let me tell you why. So the civilization's ability is Enuma, Anu, Enlil. What it does is, it reduces your science output by 50%. Now you might be thinking, that doesn't sound anything like Babylon, aren't they supposed to be the science civ? And yes, you'd be right, they are. Uh, but not in a traditional way. So, the other side to this, the other half of this yin-yang equation, is that Eureka boosts instantly complete all research for their required technology, even if Babylon doesn't have the prerequisite tech. So what does that mean in practice? It means your Eurekas unlock 100% of the technology. So for example, if you get a kill with a slinger, that would normally provide the Eureka bonus for archery, which would allow you to research archery twice as fast, or 50% off. With Babylon, when you get a kill with that slinger and you achieve the Eureka for archery, you unlock archery in its entirety. This is how you tech up with Babylon, and as I said, you can skip prerequisites. So you can jump way ahead in the tech tree. If you manage to complete some random Eureka for something really odd, you will unlock that technology and you will be able to build the buildings, units, districts, so on and so forth that it provides. That is how Babylon works in Civ 6, and I hope that makes sense. One thing I will add for those extra for experts players is that um, Babylon's multiplier, its negative multiplier to its science output, that's the minus 50%, um, further bonuses uh, stack additively rather than being multiplied. So, for example, if you have a policy that adds 10% bonus science, Babylon will have 60% of the base empire science output instead of 50% uh, instead of 55%, like it would be if it was multiplied. So just something to bear in mind that these bonuses are added rather than multiplied. Now, uh, there's actually something even more to Babylon before I get on to strategy, and that is Hammurabi's leader ability. So when you complete a district for the first time, you also get the corresponding building in that city. So for example, when you complete a campus, you'll get a free library. When you complete a lighthouse, you'll get a, a, a harbour, you'll get a free lighthouse. When you complete a holy site, you'll get a shrine, uh, so on and so forth, right the way down. Aerodrome, you get a hangar. You get the idea. Um, the only um, uh, sort of slight nuances are when you build things like an aqueduct, a canal, a dam, uh, a neighborhood. These more sort of, uh, th these less technical and more sort of superficial districts, you receive an envoy for the first time because those districts uh, tend to not have buildings. Now, you do have a unique unit. It's called the Sabum Kibitum. Yep, absolutely nailed that pronunciation, of course. Uh, it's an ancient era melee uh, infantry unit. It doesn't actually replace anything. It's sort of like a mixture between a warrior and a scout. And um, I won't really dwell on it too much other than to say it's slightly weaker than the warrior, moves slightly further than the scout, uh, than the warrior, however. So it is, it's sort of a, a unique uh, unit in the middle. I, again, I won't dwell too long on it because I don't think it's really worth much of your time. Uh, finally, their unique building is the Pelgum. Uh, it replaces the watermill. You do not receive plus one food, and it does not provide plus one food to uh, bonus resources for farms. However, it does provide two production per turn up from one. It also provides one housing and plus one food for all land tiles worked by the city adjacent to a source of fresh water. So you're kind of getting that bonus from rivers, uh, which feeds into your start bonus, which has a slight bias towards rivers to make the most of that building. Now, let's talk strategy. So your strategy with Babylon is going to be almost unlike any other Civ, not only in Civilization VI, but really across the board, okay? Because of how you unlock technologies, because of your dreadful natural science production, thanks to the 50% multiplier, 
but your incredible ability to stack Eurekas. And and I really can't stress this enough. Um, so let's talk strategy. First up, great scientists. You're going to want to prioritize great scientists, and I would recommend using the wild card that actually gives you great scientist generation points, which is not always a strategy that I would use, but... Babylon's great scientists are incredibly important, right? A lot of them provide free Eurekas. Uh, some of the early game great scientists provide uh, three Eurekas uh, for advanced technologies like mathematics and so on and so forth. And you have to remember that those Eurekas are free techs. So when you get a great scientist that provides three Eurekas, it actually provides three technologies. And that can't be understated. So make sure you prioritize your great scientists at all costs. Uh, next up, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Babylon's victory conditions, because while you might think that science would be the obvious one, uh, I argue that actually that is more of a good but not a great stance, okay? Science and culture are going to be good enough for you, but I think domination is where Babylon in Civilization VI really sets itself apart. The reason why that is, again, goes back to its innate ability. Its ability to essentially get free technologies often far earlier than you should have them, right? You can rush crossbows in particularly fast, and I think that really helps in the early game. Uh, you can also really rush men at arms particularly fast. Let me tell you just quickly about those two. So you can almost get instant men of arms. If you research writing and construct three mines, you get the boost for apprenticeship, which of course unlocks it completely. That allows you to train men of arms with bronze working for iron. You can kill three barbs to get that. Build a quarry for masonry and you can bring along a battering ram and you have some insanely quick men at arms. Also, the quick crossbowmen work much the same. Uh, so Babylon can unlock crossbowmen basically without no research at all. So you train a slinger and you kill a unit, that gives you archery. You upgrade the slinger to an archer, train two more, and you've got machinery. From there, uh, you've got crossbows. You can upgrade your archers into crossbows. The research path can be done in parallel alongside my second main strategy that I think works really well for uh, Babylon, and that is fast industrialization. So um, basically, there are many ways that you can start off uh, Babylon's game, but this is my preferred. Start off by researching mining, which has no Eureka, so you must research it. Train a settler and a builder, right? So ensure you have those two things. Settle your second city and ensure that you can build three mines with your builder there to unlock apprenticeship. From there, build an industrial zone in your two cities, at least. Uh, the first to complete an industrial zone should train a builder. You can chop down some woods and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then that'll help you get your workshops quickly, which unlocks industrialization. From there, you can build factories and coal power plants. You can unlock um, all sorts of production bonuses. And if you don't have coal near your territory, you can still settle on coal spots before any other sieve is even aware it exists. One of my really favorite rushes. Um, and the rewards are just so fantastic. So if you're building a coal power plant immediately, for example, puts you at refining, unlocks battleships which can absolutely devastate any coastal city, especially considering how bad naval units are generally in Civilization VI. Constructing those early industrial zones and their building will just give you a huge advantage as well in terms of things like your innate production, your great engineer production, and most notably, uh, the production yields will help you get even more significant subsequent Eurekas, which will further snowball you into some really fast things, early spec ops, really fast flights. You can get the bombers, which are insanely strong, particularly when your opponent has no way to shoot them down through anti-air. Um, the other final thing I'd like to cover is culture. Now, you might think that culture doesn't really matter, right? You're going fast, you're getting your units, so on and so forth. You're just going to go for a fast domination victory, and that's all she wrote. And that would be a totally fine strategy. Absolutely. There, there is nothing wrong with, with doing that, with going hard and fast. But you do need culture as Babylon because some of the Eurekas in the scientific tree require you to have certain cultural civics unlocked. Okay? So you do need to at least focus 
a little bit on your culture if you want to ensure that you can get the Eurekas and that you don't get absolutely tied down trying to research um, various technologies and not being able to do it because you haven't got the Eurekas in place. So my cultural strategy for Babylon does rely on you pushing through fast through into industrialization and it heavily centers around wonders okay so when you push through fast you've got your production really high you've got your coal power plants online hopefully and you're synergizing that well with governors like governor magnus um, th it makes it really easy for you to build a lot of wonders quickly now this will be more difficult at the higher difficulty levels of course and at those levels i'd recommend you pursue more of the militaristic route but at the lower difficulties in particular the strategy works really well so wonders create tourism based on the difference between the era they first become available and the current research era you're in so stonehenge provides two tourism in the ancient era three in the classical so on and so forth right the way through okay as babylon you can very quickly get to the atomic era through the plastics technology that unlocks your required scientific buildings and also pushes you through into that sweet sweet atomic spot right from there you can easily be getting uh seven or eight tourism out of classical era and ancient era wonders couple that with building theatre districts which I would really strongly recommend to you again because you do rely on the civics tree a little bit in terms of getting those Eureka for your scientific tree couple that with your boosted tourism from really being able to push out wonders very very quickly and cultural victory uh, becomes something that potentially Babylon can follow. And if you're not following the cultural victory, you at very least have enough culture to ensure you're competitive and keeping up with all of the research that you need. That concludes today's video and my guide for Babylon in Civilization VI, one of the most fun and unique civs to play and I'd really recommend checking it out. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like rating. It really helps me out and the channel. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you then.